Hey there. Welcome to week one of our The Dream of You online Bible study. You guys, we are so excited because this is something new that we are doing with these audio teachings. And we have the author with us, Joe Saxton. My name is Kendra. And every week we are going to join you guys. And we're going to just chat a little bit about what we're studying, but also Joe, before we started this audio recording said she's going to pack a punch. So you can expect in every teaching that we do, there's going to be a packing of a punch that you can take (laughs) away into your day. And so Joe, we are so excited to be with you. Welcome to the study. Welcome to week one. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. And hello, everybody, everybody, (laughs) wherever you are. Yes, yes, we do have a global audience. We're so excited that we are reading your book, The Dream of You. And Joe, something that I absolutely love is you dedicated this book to women that you've met at conferences, churches, coaching calls, and some women that you talk to when you're having coffee with them. And I think that's what we understand as we read through your book is that you are just a friend that has wonderful wisdom and that you share a little, little snippets of your life. So we're excited to get to hear from you each week. Thank you. So with that, um, you may know Joe, you may not know Joe Saxton, but what we found out about her is that she's a lover of snacks. And so everyone, if there's one thing we can get behind, it's that we love Jesus and that we love snacks. And I think that's Mm. very universal all around. So Joe, do you have a favorite snack that you like to snack on? Oh, well, it depends on how healthy I'm feeling that week. So if I'm feeling like virtuous, then there will be like sugar snap peas or carrots and things with hummus. I know, but that was just because I was having being, otherwise it's chips. (laughs) Well, let me tell you, Joe, my favorite snack are kettle cooked chips. So I think we're going to be great friends. Yeah, I miss those. I love them so much. Oh, so good. All right. Well, with that, go ahead and grab your favorite snack. If you're listening to this Mm -hmm. audio recording near a kitchen or near a place where you can grab a snack. And Joe, we would love to hear what you have for us for week one. Okay, well, week one with the beginning, I have a question. I was that kid who always asked lots of questions. You know, there's always a child in the family <laughs> who asks why, yes. but why, but why. I was that why child. Um, and um, I think because I was ignored, I'm still asking those questions. <laughs> so um, the question is, who were you before anybody told you who you were supposed to be? Ooh. Who were you before anyone told you who you were supposed to be? And if, if I may, because I never really stop at one question, <laughs> really, an accompanying question, let's have them in a pair. The other question would be, who were you before life happened to you? Mm. And the reason why I ask these questions, and, and in some ways comes off the dedication that I, when I wrote this book, was as I've met women all around the world, um, different marital statuses, or status, I'm not sure which, how we say it. Um, <laughs> well, as I've met women around the world, different ethnicities, nationalities, backgrounds, I've noticed us all collectively find that we've needed to check in with our sense of God-given identity, mm. our understanding of who we are and actually whose we are, because life has happened to us mm. and people have happened to us and they have shaped us, shaped how we see ourselves, how we love, how we live, how we lead. And we don't rise above what we believe to be true about ourselves either. And so we come at this this study, this um, book, this whole thing, this chapter of our lives, asking ourselves, what was God's dream of who we were? Mm. How did God view us? What was God thinking when he made us? Um, What were his hopes and dreams for us? How did he wire us? And did he delight to do so? And what have we picked up along the way? How have we picked things up along the way? There's this verse in Proverbs, um, which talks about the power of a name and a good name being more desirable than great riches and to be esteemed is better than silver and gold. And what strikes me about that verse is so much in our society tells us what makes us valuable and it often revolves around money, power and beauty, even sex. You know, money, sex and power are the things that have fueled so much. And often when we think about who we are and whose we are, it may revolve around those three things. I don't have much, so I'm nobody. I don't have those resources. Um, No one thought I was the attractive one Um, or I'm not, I don't feel as attractive as I used to. Mm -hmm. I don't feel as beautiful as I, as that woman, as that person. And so now my worth isn't as, as valuable. I don't have the status of somebody else. And it seems that those kinds of pressures are as old as the Bible. 
and um and as old as wisdom literature which says you know a good name is more desirable who you are who what you're about your your reputation all that makes you you but even as we look at that we might find some of those things have been challenged too and so my invitation this week is to reflect on the things that may have named us may have labeled us um the labels that may have felt like good ones but have limited us and the ones which have been bad ones, the experiences that have shaped and broken our identity Mm. and brought us to who who we are today. It may be you were told you were the strong one, so you've been taking on everybody's problems, friends, everyone's, and wondering if anybody's going to be strong for you. Um, You might have been told you're the stupid one and now you don't trust yourself, you don't trust your thinking, you don't trust your discernment, your journey with the Lord. You don't have courage and confidence when you come to situations. Life may have happened to you, tragedies and violations, things which have fragmented your very sense of your God-given identity and purpose. The good news with wherever you've been is that God isn't done. Mm. God hasn't finished with your story. And although life may have happened to you and people may have happened to you, God has also happened to you. That's good. The saviour happens to you too. That's good, Joe. I love that you broke down the Proverbs verse, Proverbs 22, 1. And it reminded me of something I learned about identity um, in modern day terms of we're either a we're either identified by our performance, people, or possessions. And so very similar to what you were saying and just Mm -hmm. how one of those things or all three things can play into just how we even enter into the world every day when we go about um, what we're doing. And so um, as we think about those questions that you asked us, I want to challenge all of y'all to replay this recording maybe later in the week or if you're able to have a journal out and journal um, those questions that Joe even asked you because I think they're going to be or lay the groundwork to what we're going to discover together over the next six weeks. And so, Joe, thank you so much for giving that challenge to us and just for weaving in scripture as well. Something that we say here at Proverbs 31 Ministries is when you know the truth and live the truth, it changes everything. And what Mm. we're talking about is when you know the truth of God's word, when you open up the Bible and you read stories and read scripture, I mean, it is breathed by God. It's created by God. And so we say, when you know the truth, know the truth of God's word and live it out, it changes everything. And we hope by the end of this study that that becomes true for you too. So Joe, thank you for joining us on week one and we will be back with you for week two next week. See you next week, everybody.